first of all, it's really nice to see a room full of people, which is really exciting to see. Yeah. Um, the second thing I want to ask is how many of you are familiar with MOOCs? Have you, how many of you actually had a, take, took a MOOC in the past, or is taking a MOOC? Okay, right, so at least I'm not going to, no, yeah? Right, so I'm going to start, this is part of my PhD. Um, one day I will probably finish. <laughs> but, and you see me presented many, many things about my PhD, so this is the final one. Um, so, um, some of you might actually be familiar with Portus MOOC. So the MOOC was actually created back in 2014-15 by the University of Southampton as a way to engage collaboratively with all the partners. And the idea was actually to put out there all the information um, that were also, uh, they could have been reused for teaching at undergraduate and master level. So all the steps at the MOOC were actually designed to be reused in the classroom at some point. Um, and that is actually where I started from. And then they kind of said, oh, do you know, this is actually an amazing tool so we can engage with the Italian community. Um, and this is how I started uh, from, because then I realized that they didn't really understood <laughs> what the engagement means, because actually in Italy, not many people can speak appropriately <laughs> um, English. Uh, they have a second language, the English that is so good enough that they actually really want to take a course complete in English. So I started to look at accessibility but in a different way and breaking the barrier of language um, and accessibility in terms of actually how do I access information because I don't have the tools, because I don't know those, um, those terms. So. And in the past, the other things that they've done, they're trying to link, so there were a lot of other um, virtual things that were happening, there were uh, access to blog, there were actually supporting MOOCs, there was all this information out there, there was build but not link really well. Uh, there was a lot of engagement and clearly they were targeting different community. Um, and Portus has always been a, as a site and a project where everyone experimented new things, which is really good. So we had actually had a lot of materials and from there I decided that I did not want to create additional materials, but I was interested in how people could actually reuse the material that was already produced. And that will impact also as archaeologists, because when, when I'm producing something and I put something out there, how people will actually reuse it. Can they access it? Can they understand what I mean? Um, so I started to look at what means simplifying, and you will see a lot of things that will link a lot of discussion that have been in the presentation before mine. Um, so I start to talk with the uh, people that design it about actually simplifying the way that we put the information out there. Because clearly there were so many different platforms and you were going to one platform, but then we didn't actually know where the model was. There was still somewhere else. So you actually had to jump across through it. And a lot of people came back to me, not from academia, but also from outside, thinking, but you're actually going to lose information. We really want the piece of information to be in there. Um, it's going to be, well, the outcomes is going to actually have less value. Actually, not always. Sometimes it's just a different way to get people into the information that you have out there. Um, and this is where I start. So I'm not going to call it agile method. I'm going to call it action research. <laughs> and action research um, theory is actually something that's used a lot um, in health literacy. And it's what all the governments are actually using when they want to make an intervention. So there is a problem. Everyone is smoking. And this will cost a lot, of, a lot of money. So what can we do? Well, let's plan something. Let's do something else. Let's make an action. Then research or observe what happened and then make changes. So it's a continuous improvement. And then it's actually what makes sustainable as well. And it's what makes more engaging because the community will change all the time. And this is actually what I've learned <laughs> through the process. So I work with the Ministry of Education um, in, in, in Italy and also with the British Council um, to try to engage different community schools in Italy. And that was the idea to actually try to understand how that could be used by a completely different community, that is not someone that already has a degree or is interested in university, how can that be used actually by schools? Um, so I done some mapping and I defined, I found two different schools. Uh, they were interested in the project, actually how I wanted to structure it. More, I actually needed to create this but about Stone Age. So um, they were interested in using the materials uh, from um, the, the MOOC in two different ways. So the first one it was about flipped classroom approach. So I actually have a teacher school 
the map and find out actually what were the videos or the materials that will contribute that was already created out there, they would contribute to what they were discussing. So they used the materials in terms of building, building structures, um, globalization, um, anything that's about um, navigation and movement to link to things that they were doing in uh, Latin literacy um, or in Latin translation. So they use actually all the materials that's there and they watch videos and read the materials at home and they were using the classroom uh, as a space to actually have a conversation and come up with different ways. And what they were also doing, because uh, I wanted to interact with them, uh, we were using social media. So we, were, we had a Facebook page that was open only to the students, uh, where the teacher was there trying to make sure that everything was going okay. Um, and they use this as a way to actually communicate. We communicate with each other. And the second phase was um, in terms of, so the Italian government has just done a reform a couple of years ago that was called the Good School. And as a part of the research, the, 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 these changes, students between 16 and 18 years old will need to take a placement. So they will need to actually have a work experience. So in that case, the um, student will uh, want to use the materials in terms of um, explore and develop the skills of the students. So they want them to learn something, they want to, um, for them to learn about 3D modeling. They wanted to use the materials in terms of engagement with their own cultural heritage. So it was not all about talking and making comparison between Roman world and now. It was about, um, oh, let's look at Roman building in your own city. Let's explore the city in a different way. So those is where I started from. And there is a reason why I've actually used Italian schools, and it's because it's really easy to map. So because of all the European framework and the national frameworks, it's, it's actually easy to map UK and the Bologna process as well. So UK higher education system and the Italian education system are pretty much the same in terms of pedagogies and actually how it works. Uh, and when you go down to the um, to pre-university, pre you actually have a national progression system, so it tells you this, those are the steps. So it's easy in terms of pedagogy and actually what you need to learn and what you need to learn is, is slightly easier. Um, the other school, the other things that I started in terms of accessibility, um, it's about smog and um, go facing index, and I will come back to that for a second. So when I started to plan and I clearly have the schools and I have all line up, I just started to think how they were actually um, read and access this content. Um, and this is actually where, I don't know if anyone of you is famous, is, um, is aware of a smog index? No? So it's actually an index that will give you a readability score of your text. So it will tell you if actually that text can be read by someone with the knowledge of the language that is equal to something. So the university score, um, so undergraduate should have a, any, anything that's in literature should be around 17. And that is the language that you acquire through your studies. Um, so because, and I will come back to this in a second, sorry. And the other thing is about the Bloom taxonomy, taxonomy. I don't know if anyone of you is aware of it. Yes. So the people that are not aware of it, um, it was <laughs> created uh, back in the um, 70s and it's about actually how people learn. And what I look at is, because clearly things evolve and we have a lot of digital stuff. I'm interested in how people learn from digital material, but also share, because we're all creating new materials and environment. Right, so when I, did, when I performed this mock analysis and readability text on all the materials in the MOOC, this is what I come up. So I divided by video, so all the transcript for the video, discussion, the weather, and articles. And what I came up was actually that it was all too difficult for the age group that I was targeting. Um, and this is quite interesting because we never actually think about how we write and because we are so used in writing academic English for papers and journals that other academics will read, um, that doesn't really make it accessible or engaging for the community. So I had to rewrite everything <laughs> in the text and make it um, a little bit simpler um, to make sure that the student actually access that. I done the same things with the Italian translation and actually worked out it was quite um, accessible for them, so it's, it's okay. Um, I also asked them how they learn 
um, archaeology and history, and they all learn pretty much from school books. Someone said that, it, that she didn't, didn't learn anything, which is fine. Um, <laughs> but one of the results from the first study is that it, it seems that there are a lot of people that improve. So I, have, um, I asked them to fill a survey at the beginning and then after the project, and I've actually asked them how they felt, how it was their um, confidence <coughs> in using English, and that looks they improve, which is good for me. And actually, how do they think the <coughs> knowledge about the Roman world increase or not? And that seems to increase, so it's a positive. Lesson learned. Um, you, we're talking a lot about user interfaces. I realized that with user interface, they didn't work because they were not really engaging. Um, so we're using something called C Note that was developed for uh, students in, uh, in university. They had a lot of time to actually familiarize it, and my student didn't. So they didn't find it really engaging. So they were not actually using all the functionality. And I realized that they didn't work. Uh, so we had a Facebook page, and initially I thought of engaging with Twitter, and no one used Twitter. So it's fine. So I had to switch and change everything on Facebook. Um, they created 3D models, and they clearly were really, um, they got something out of it. And someone said, I, done to, I tried to do 3D model, it, it was difficult, so I created a house. And, and it's fine in any case, because at least it tried. On the second reiteration, I said, okay, so this doesn't work, and this is why we created Portus Portal. So it was created to actually have all the visual up there, so people can navigate. Um, the content as they want, but in a kind of virtual space, um, they, and everything else is linked to uh, any other information there is. There is a web tool that you can take, uh, there are videos and articles that have been published about a particular building, more than actually faces. So you have the choices of doing what you want, um, and again, the end, <laughs> videos and pictures, so we're doing data mining, data mining, and what I realized from this is that despite the fact they actually have co-design activities with the teacher, the teachers in the classroom were the ones that they were really instrumental for that to do it. The second time, because they were using and they were leaving, they were left to actually explore what they wanted to do. Um, 3D models that they produce have no meaning for me or for the project of Portus itself. Um, the other things that I realized they are not really good in metadata, and because I was trying to submit a, a well, create a sustainable platform where you can actually have all these things imported directly, the students send me those folders called translation, and the 3D model is called uh, uh, colored columns. I don't know from where. I have no idea what they've done in there. So it's really difficult in those in those ways. But yes, so this is much. Well, learned. <laughs>